Kamala Harris made history on January 20th, 2021, when she was sworn in as the first female vice president of the United States. Upon her swearing in, she also became the highest ranking female official in US history and the first African-American and Asian-American vice president. The mainstream media buzzed with praise and anticipation. It was time for a reset on Kamala Harris. History made Vice President Kamala Harris presiding over the Senate. The first woman, the first black woman, the first woman of South Asian descent to be a heartbeat away from the presidency. Of course, this is the first time we've had a woman vice president. And as a consequence of that, when the president uh, takes this routine step for presidents when they undergo uh, anesthesia, uh, she's going to be the first woman in American history to exercise or have the potential to exercise presidential power. The New York Times posited that as the tie-breaking vote in an evenly split Senate, she would be a historic figure. She'd also lead the way on a variety of issues they reported, quote, she will bring to her history-making role at the White House an array of skills that Mr. Biden will draw on, including the prosecutorial chops that she displayed in Senate Judiciary Committee hearings, her personal energy that balances Mr. Biden's low-key approach, and the voice she will offer to women and people of color. The Times further reported that Biden would not be tasking Kamala with any specific spheres of control. Instead, she would serve as a governing partner to Mr. Biden on all of his top priorities. If fulfilled, that mandate could make her among the most influential vice presidents in history. But Kamala's vice presidency was destined to be a failure, a historic failure. In fact, she was destined to become the least popular vice president in American history. That unpopularity was the result of three factors. First, the unpopularity of the administration she served. Second, her own incompetence. And third, her grating personality and irritating foibles. Kamala's vice presidential tenure would be riddled with more gaffes, scandals, and failures than all previous vice presidencies combined. Her tenure began with problems surrounding COVID. As a vice presidential candidate, she'd expressed skepticism about any potential vaccine developed under the Trump administration. During her vice presidential debate with Mike Pence, she had even rejected the vaccine outright. If the, the doctors tell us that we should take it, I'll be the first in line to take it, absolutely. But if Donald Trump tells us I should that we should take it, I'm not taking it. Now, she was tasked with outreach to communities across America on the vaccine. And she wasn't a particularly convincing saleswoman. The, the community's power to heal the community's power to do the work that we know must be done in the spirit of what the Bible and everything else about life tells us about the importance of love thy neighbor, love thy neighbor. And that truly is the spirit with which we are gathered today. In March 2021, Kamala cast the tie-breaking vote on the so-called American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. Critics suggested that pouring trillions of dollars in stimulus spending into the economy would only further jog already high inflation. Kamala instead celebrated the passage of the act. The next year, she would also cast the tie-breaking vote for the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, again, denying it would spur inflation despite its massive spending. Prices have gone up, and families and individuals are dealing with the realities of, of the, that bread costs more, that gas costs more. And we have to understand what that means. That's about the cost of living going up. In March 2021, with a massive and unprecedented increase in illegal border crossings, Biden tasked Kamala with the unforgiving job of handling border issues. There are many factors that lead president to leave these countries. And um, while we are clear that people should not come to the border now, um, we also understand that we will enforce the law. The administration has been facing criticism about conditions at facilities run by Customs and Border Protection. CBP releasing this video shot last week inside a facility meant to hold 250 people. Instead, there are close to 4,000 there. The border situation would become, under the Biden administration and Kamala's watchful eye, the worst migration crisis in modern American history. In fiscal year 2021, U.S. Customs and Border Protection reported over 1.7 million encounters with migrants at the southern border, the highest annual total on record. This figure represented a 374% increase from the approximately 458,000 encounters reported in fiscal year 2020. In 2021, the number of unaccompanied minors apprehended at the border reached over 144,000, straining the capacity of facilities designed to house them. In some detention centers, children were held for an average of 120 hours, well beyond the 72-hour limit set by American law. Children in cages, the supposed horror of the Trump administration, became commonplace under Joe Biden cities nationwide were overwhelmed by the migration crisis. Oh, it is a crisis. 
Mike Johnston is one of five Democratic mayors recently writing President Biden, saying action is needed to help cities address the crisis. What's the one thing you want from the Biden administration right now? When you admit someone for asylum into the country, they should get work authorization. We should expedite the process of approving that application so it doesn't take four years, it could take 30 days. I'd like the city to actively proclaim that it is not a sanctuary city. And Kamala did nothing. Well, actually, she waited a few months, then traveled to Guatemala, where she declared that she would be seeking to alleviate the root causes of migration. If you want to deal with the effects of, 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 a, of a problem, then you have to go to the core of what is causing it. And so that is the approach we are taking. When the president asked me to deal with this issue, it was about addressing the root causes of migration. And the root causes are based on the problems and the challenges that people are facing in countries like Guatemala which is why I was there. But it was her odd admonition to would-be migrants that drew attention. I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. The United States will continue to enforce our laws and secure our border. For the left, such a statement was heresy. For the right, such a statement was merely empty talk. Kamala, meanwhile, avoided the actual American border like the plague. Seeking to avoid the awkward photo op of presiding over an open border, she instead went on national television and lied about having visited the border, and then was caught in that lie. Here's an interview from June 2021. There's one other topic I wanted to uh, talk to you about, but let me just quickly put a button. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, I'm here in Guatemala today I, at some point. you know. I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I and I haven't been to Europe. And I, I mean I don't I don't understand the point that you're making. The tone deafness, dishonesty, awkwardness were all patented Kamala. By June 2021, Politico was running pieces openly speculating about the breakdown of Kamala Harris's office, calling it rife with dissent. Quote, there is dysfunction inside the VP's office, aides and administration officials say, and it's emanating from the top. As with her presidential campaign and then her vice presidential campaign, Kamala's team was rudderless and chaotic. Quote, Harris's team is experiencing low morale, porous lines of communication, and diminished trust among aides and senior officials, Politico reported. One staffer said, quote, people are thrown under the bus from the very top. There are short fuses. It's an abusive environment. It's not a healthy environment and people often feel mistreated. It's not a place where people feel supported, but a place where people feel treated like Kamala's spokeswoman, Simone Sanders, ripped into the staff league saying, quote, we are not making rainbows and bunnies all day. Months later, Sanders left for a job at MSNBC. By November 2021, Kamala Harris carried a 28% approval rating, an unheard of number for a vice president. It had been well earned. Kamala's team struck back in December 2021 against Joe Biden's White House. In a December 23rd, 2021 piece, the New York Times reported that Kamala's allies were frustrated at her treatment by the White House. The problem was not Kamala's obvious incompetence and unlikability. It was Joe Biden's refusal to grant her more of a stage. Quote, according to interviews with more than two dozen White House officials, political allies, elected officials, and former aides, Ms. Harris is still struggling to define herself in the Biden White House or meaningfully correct what she and her aides feel is an unfair perception that she is adrift in the job, the Times reported. Kamala denied involvement in the story. Uh-huh. As her vice presidency sank into the mire, Kamala began to rely more and more on her intersectional credentials as a defense mechanism. The Times piece reported that Kamala blamed her lack of popularity on, wait for it, racism. Quote, Ms. Harris has privately told her allies that the news coverage of her would be different if she were any of her 48 predecessors whom she has described as all white and male. Kamala began to talk endlessly about equity, the notion that inequality of outcome was the fault of systemic racism. This had been a theme of Kamala's since the 2020 race. In November 2020, just days before the election, she had tweeted out this video explaining equity in a way that would make Karl Marx blush. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests, oh, everyone should get the same amount. The problem with that, not everybody's starting out from the same place. So if we're all getting the same amount, but you started out back there and I started out over here, we can get the same amount, but you're still gonna be that far back behind me. It's about giving people the resources and the support they need so that everyone can be on equal footing and then compete on equal footing. Equitable treatment means we all end up at the same place.
But now racial equity became a theme of her vice presidency. Lynching is not a relic of the past. Racial acts of terror still occur in our nation. And when they do, we must all have the courage to name them and hold the perpetrators to account. The days of top cop Kamala Harris were over. She was now a full-fledged left-winger on matters of law and order. Because you voted and said, hey, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. We're now dealing with that because you voted. Kamala, in her desire to be loved, was leaving her supposed moderation in the rearview mirror and pandering to the max. Our Supreme Court is on the line. Our basic freedoms are being tested. Madam, VP, I know you've been traveling across the country. What are you hearing? Yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. And let me tell you, you're right, Taraji. There is so much at stake in this moment. The majority of us believe in freedom and equality. But these extremists, as they say, they not like us. No, they not. In light of that last clip, Complex Magazine called Kamala's acting stint, quote, unflinchingly corny, while comparing it to similar moments from 2016 Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Quote, if Hillary Clinton is the Ken Griffey Jr. of pandering, then it looks like Kamala is becoming the Barry Bonds of it, the magazine wrote. She also began playing up her feminist credentials, particularly in the aftermath of the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe versus Wade in June 2022. Kamala leapt into action to declare her ardor for abortion. This is a health care crisis. Because understand, millions of women in America will go to bed tonight without access to the health care and reproductive care that they had this morning. This is the first time in the history of our nation that a constitutional right has been taken from the people of America. This would become a running theme for Kamala, Kamala as defender of abortion. But as usual, Kamala's defense was weird and confusing. So everyone get ready for the language, uterus. <laughs> that part of the body needs a lot of medical care from time to time. <laughs> as the administration continued to decline in popularity, both Biden and Kamala began to refocus on the argument that had won them power in the first place, the supposed evils of Donald Trump. On the first anniversary of January 6th, Kamala gave an absurd speech at the Capitol. December 7th, 1941, September 11th, 2001, and January 6th, 2021. This was a crazy comparison, but it was a theme she would continue to press to this very moment. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this genuinely could be the last democratic election we ever have. You're right. Listen to what he says, he's telling you. Dictators aren't a dictator for one day, and then it's let the people decide. No, and I'm going to tell you, as vice president, I've now met with over 150 world leaders, presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and caves. The world leaders have come up to me expressing their real concern. None of it worked. The biggest problem for Kamala wasn't, in the end, either Joe Biden's unpopular policies or even her own political incompetence. It was her bizarre, off-putting personality. She became famous for her odd word salads. We all watched the television coverage of just yesterday. That's on top of everything else that we know and don't know yet based on what we've just been able to see. And because we've seen it or not doesn't mean it hasn't happened, but just limited to what we have seen. For us at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present. I can imagine what can be and be unburdened by what has been. You know? Six former administration officials last week wrote that open letter urging the administration to change course, to change strategy. Is it time? It is time for us to do what we have been doing, and that time is every day. Every day it is time for us to agree. Kamala even lost The Daily Show with these gems. Talking about the significance of the passage of time. Right, the significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. It wasn't just the word salad, though. It was Kamala's extreme inauthenticity. 
her supposed love for Venn diagrams, a love that apparently should be the subject of Homeric odes. Remember Venn diagrams, those three circles? Right, and then let's just see where they overlap. You will not be surprised because I have constructed a Venn diagram on this. Remember those three circles, how they overlap? I love Venn diagrams, so I just do. Whenever you're dealing with conflict, pull out a Venn diagram, right? And so, you know, the three circles. Her supposedly passionate enjoyment of electric buses. No exhaust, no diesel smell. The bus has Wi-Fi and even USB outlets next to every seat. I mean, come on, imagine. You can charge your phone on your way home from work. That's good stuff. Perhaps the most cringeworthy moment of her vice presidency was her explanation of space to a group of supposedly awestruck school children. Your next challenge is to find and meet the head of the Space Council. I'll give you a hint. She actually lives at the Naval Observatory. I wonder who the head of the Space Council is. Are you kidding me? The head of the Space Council is the Vice President! People, the smart people, the scientists and the engineers came up with the idea that if you build something that looks like that, you can see the sun yeah. and you can see the moon, right? Well, wait till you guys see the moon. I'm telling you, I just, I don't know what it is about those craters on the moon. Hilariously, it turned out the school kids from the NASA video were child actors hired by a company appropriately titled Sinking Ship Entertainment. None of that stopped Kamala from further explorations of the magic of space, of course. Space is exciting. It spurs our imaginations. And it forces us to ask big questions. Space, it affects us all. Strapped in to their seats and waited as the tanks beneath them filled with tens of thousands of gallons of fuel. And then they launched. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Indeed, space appeared to have no limits between Kamala Harris's ears. All of this could have been chalked up to a Veep-like inability to communicate properly. But as we've learned, Kamala Harris isn't just awkward, she's a liar. Nowhere has that mattered more than in the matter of Joe Biden's health. It has been obvious to anyone with a functional brain that Joe Biden has been in a state of severe physical and mental decline for at least three years. That should have been most obvious to the vice president who stood beside him, carried his water, made excuses for him. But from the very beginning of her term, she has downplayed President Joe Biden's health issues. This wasn't done out of an innocent desire to spare Joe Biden's feelings. This was lying. It was deliberate falsehood. For example, in an interview with Katie Couric, Kamala downplayed the age issue, stating that critics had nothing to run on, suggesting that focusing on Biden's age was a sign of political desperation. This whole issue that they are raising about his age is, again, because they've got nothing to run on. When asked if she would be honest about the president's health if it started to go south, she said this in November 2023. If there ever is a problem, yeah. do you think that you could go tell the American public? Do you think in your role that you're that you're in a position to do that? Of course, if necessary, but there's no need for that. I don't there is a political argument that is being made that is not based on substance. And you're asking me to hypothesize around what are my duties to the American people as vice president of the United States that are based on ethics and morals and the law. I will always follow those rules. But I am suggesting to you that it is important we not be seduced into one of the only arguments that that side of the aisle has right now. But of course, she was lying. And in January, she kept on lying. I spend a lot of time with Joe Biden be it in the Oval Office or the Situation Room. And I can tell you, this is someone who is tireless in terms of working on behalf of the American people. To your point of knowing Joe Biden, he comes from a background and a place in his heart and soul where he cares so deeply about working people, about families. Just weeks later, when special counsel Robert Hur released a report clearing Joe Biden from his handling classified documents, Based on Joe Biden being senile, Kamala ripped into Robert Hur. What I saw of that report last night, I believe is, as a former prosecutor, um, the comments that were made by that prosecutor, gratuitous, inaccurate, and inappropriate. 
And of course, who could forget these awkward moments following Joe Biden's horrific zombie-esque debate performance with Donald Trump? Yes, there was a slow start, but it was a strong finish. And what became very clear through the course of the night is that Joe Biden is fighting on behalf of the American people, on substance, on policy, on performance. Joe Biden on, is extraordinarily strong. And but I'm that, sorry, that on, on substance and policy and performance tonight, I mean, his, the president's performance tonight clearly was disappointing for his supporters. CNN is reporting Democratic lawmakers watching the debate were worried, uh, worried about the president's performance. One said it was a, a disaster. Another called it a train wreck. Anderson, the point has to be performance in terms of what a president does. A right, president but, but, who but incites an insurrection against the Capitol. No, no, but I, I got the point that you're making about a one and a half hour debate tonight. I'm talking about three and a half years of performance in work that has been ex historic. But whether is that it be the man, infrastructure, the man who we the saw former on the guy, the other guy, is that the, the other guy you on see the debate stage? Day. Kamala's insistence on Biden's vitality, despite mountains of evidence to the contrary, proved her complicity in hiding the true state of his health from the American public. And there was a reason for that. If Joe Biden could succeed in defeating Donald Trump again, he would almost certainly resign the presidency during his second term if he didn't die in office first. And then Kamala Harris would be president of the United States. And this is where we now stand. Whether Joe Biden drops out of the race or not, Kamala Harris is the Democratic candidate for president of the United States. She's incompetent, of course. She's unlikable beyond a doubt. But most of all, Kamala Harris is false. She has been false nearly her entire life. From dating a man twice her age for his political power to playing a tough on crime prosecutor for the cameras, from covering up scandals as attorney general of California to manufacturing scandals out of whole cloth as a senator, from gaining the vice presidency by playing racial radical to seeking the presidency by covering up Joe Biden's infirmities, Kamala Harris is a liar. She is inauthentic, and she demonstrates that inauthenticity every single day. That's what lies behind the bizarre laughter, the strange word salads, the obtuse slogans. It's what lies behind her policy confusion, the messiness of her campaigns, the incompetence of her office. It's why she's the most unpopular vice president in American history. All of it is a cover-up, a cover-up for nothing. Because in the end, that is what is at the core of Kamala Harris, nothing. She has no guiding principles. She has no basic philosophy. She has no actual beliefs or true agenda other than her own power. She is what she always was, grasping, ambitious, power hungry, and venal. Kamala Harris is a scam artist, and that scam artist is now a hair's breadth from the Oval Office, where her incompetence and inauthenticity aren't just a problem. They're a dangerous existential issue for the United States of America.